We're recording. All right. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Project Peace by Youth. My name is Todd Katz. I'd like to introduce you to Paul Ritter, our DJ for the morning. <laughs> hey, Project Peace by Youth. This is so exciting. It's happening. We have so many people uh, uh, who have joined us, and we want to say thank you so much for taking just a little bit of time to make this happen. Uh, I, 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 there's no fake. I got goosebumps on top of goosebumps. It's so exciting. And so we're going to get started. We're going to make sure that we stay on time. Uh, we want to make sure that, uh, uh, that we get through everything and get everybody information, but, but also remember we are recording this. So at any point in time, uh, you guys can go back and take a look at it. Or if, if people who are uh, online or, uh, uh, via phone call, you can, you can, uh, see what's going on. The other thing is the people who are on uh, by phone, uh, we sent out this morning uh, the the presentation, and so if you want to click on that and follow along, you can do that too. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and hit the page. All right. Before we get started, make sure. Oh, go back. Oh, go back one. This is the before best we get item. started. Uh, uh, Jenna up here in the picture, make sure that you can, that you mute yourself so we can make sure that all information gets out and, and you can change the layout if you can't see the presentation. Uh, by the way, that is, uh, that is Jenna's index finger. I wanted to point that out. Uh, <laughs> make sure that we all know that. <laughs> and so, and then, and then make sure if you got questions, we'll try and answer what we can. Uh, as fast as we can, but ask any questions in the chat box. And if we don't get them answered right away, we'll always respond to it and, and we'll figure it out. So without further ado, Project Peace by Youth, let's get this thing started. Go ahead and hit the slide. My name is Paul Ritter. I'm a teacher at Pontiac Township High School in Pontiac, Illinois. Uh, on behalf of the team that I get to work with, that it is truly a privilege to meet all of you. Uh, I'll introduce Todd Katz. Todd is a, a science teacher at Whitney Young Magnet School uh, up in Chicago. Uh, then we have Jenna, Jenna Wave, Jenna Wave. There's Jenna. She's an O-Rise participant uh, with the USC, for the US EPA. She's also a Ninja Eco Warrior and, and uh, a very exciting member of Operation Endangered Species. Very cool to have Jenna. Uh, Jessica, Jessica, give a wave. Jessica is in the US, uh, the U.S. United States Environmental Protection Agency Office of Research and Development. She is the Enviro Atlas team. She is a she is an amazing, amazing person, and we're thankful to have Jessica on our team. Wave, Jessica. You probably waved twice. That's okay. Then we have Megan Gavin. Megan is the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Regional Five, Region Five Environmental Education Coordinator. Uh, just an incredible individual. Uh, and, and I'm fortunate to also know her. Uh, go ahead and wave, Megan. Okay, and then we have Kara Bell. Kara is the United States Environmental Protection Agency Region 5 uh, School Environmental Health Coordinator. And, and that rounds up, and, and Kara is amazing too, that rounds up our, our top, our team, our team of six uh, to make this happen. So go ahead and hit the forward. Um, so, so what's our mission? Our mission is to create an opportunity to empower teachers to empower students. What we're doing is we're developing um, a system to help students understand local issues uh, and then, uh, then understand what they can do to make a difference uh, in their own community and, and through citizen science and action. And, and so what's exciting is, is that we're building upon uh, some things that, that we've done uh, in the past and, and we're moving forward. Operation Endangered Species uh, is a program that uh, students developed back in 2011 um, when we prompted them and said, hey, if you could do anything you want to do, what do you want to do? And, and they said, well, we want to make a difference by uh, bringing back and uh, reintroducing a regionally extinct uh, species of reptile. Uh, and we, we went through the process of, okay, there are four, uh, what do you want to do? And it's got to be something that we can do in the classroom. And, and all of a sudden, uh, they come up with, and you see it in this picture right here, uh, they said, you know what, 
uh, out of all the turtles and all the reptiles in the state of Illinois. Um, the alligator snapping turtle is the ugliest we've ever seen. And that's the one we want to do. And so um, we, we put together the opportunities for these kids. They went to um, the state DNR, talked to them, and they says, okay, if you can come up with uh, the money to do it, uh, you can do it. And, and okay, well, what do we got to do? Well, just come up with $100,000 and you guys can move forward. And so the kids put to the test. Uh, this is more than a giant bake sale, right? This is this is uh, the kids making it happen. And, and uh, I know a number of the teachers who are on this call uh, uh, currently have uh, snapping turtles, alligator snapping turtles with our program in their classroom. But what ends up happening is they come up with the money. We hand the big check over and they go, uh, okay, let's go. And as it happens, um, we now have over 527 alligator snapping turtles in their historic home range in Illinois because of kids. Give them a round of applause. Everybody's round of applause. Absolutely. Ooh. And so it, it, it didn't matter what grade level they were in. We had we had turtles in second grade and we had turtles uh, uh, in, in college. Uh, and so uh, all and all in between. And so the idea is, is they wanted to move forward. So we created this program with these kids who developed it. They designed it. Go to the next slide, please. And so as we kind of moved forward, um, each year we would put together summits. Todd would put together his summit up at Whitney Young um, Magnet School. I would put together uh, my summit at Pontiac Township High School. We would bring uh, kids, teachers in. And the idea was that the students are the teachers. We are there simply to facilitate uh, whatever it is that they want to teach about. And I, and I think that's the big ticket item. Um, if you empower students to be the ones who are making the change, then there's a lot of education that they have to go through that they want to go through because they're the ones doing it. And so by bringing them together, by bringing the teachers, the students, letting the students be the leaders, uh, everybody else jumps on board. And, and the whole idea is that, that without kids focused on what they're doing, um, it, education, people have a definition of education as something that's being done to you. And, and, and instead, this is a journey. This is a journey and that's what education should be. And so by doing that, um, they improve the overall environmental health of not only their community, their school, their, their, the, the state and beyond. And so what we're trying, what we're doing um, is working together collaboratively to let students learn from students, uh, students uh, who are empowered to make make real change happen. And uh, I, I'm humbled. I'm humbled that I get to be a part of everybody who's on this because it, it truly is a team. It's a team effort. And by us empowering students, uh, especially in this time of, of remote learning, right? So uh, these are things that can be done with the students and you're not in contact with them because if you're empowering them to do it, then they'll take it to the end, uh, the next level. And I have found, and I, and I know I speak for everyone here, but I have found that when given the opportunity, students will always exceed your expectations if you help them build the toolbox that they're pulling their tools out of and, and, and help them and facilitate to move forward. Next slide, please. Mute. TK. Todd, you're on mute. Right now, what Todd's saying is it's a privilege to know all of you. And he says how handsome Paul Ritter is. Nice. Good job. And um, and he's thankful that he was able to buy a canoe. All right. I'm good. That was almost exactly what I was saying, especially the part about Paul being so handsome. Um, so thank you all for being on this. My name is Todd Katz. Uh, what we're going to be doing today uh, for this project that I think is, is for some of you, this, uh, the, it's not going to be as new. You've already been working to empower your kids. Uh, for others of you, we're going to help you to do that. And, so, and to do so, we're going to help uh, by allowing you to collaborate with different students uh, and help students with their own projects uh, that they're creating and then 
you're just helping to guide them with an interest that they already have. We'll provide you, or they'll provide themselves with the, with the parameters. We're gonna teach you about the tools to use. Um, once we empower this uh, students, that's where they, we can see what they could do from a community standpoint to really make a difference. And I will tell you from my own experience as well, like what this does to kids and how this completely changes their lives, how it changes what schools they choose to go to, what occupations they go into, it's really powerful. Um, and you know, at the end of the at the end of their you know time in school or in high school, you know, they'll say what you did was one of the most influential things in their life, um, and that's really cool, especially when you have all the other uh, teachers to think about who also work with those kids, but yet they're saying it was because of you. Um, what the students are going to be able to do, and this is what I'm really excited for, I've been doing this sort of project for the last 10 years, but with what we're going to get into with something called Enviro Atlas, the tools that are, um, that the students can then use will help to provide them with real data that they could make an informed decision as to what they should do to help improve the quality of the environment within their community. Um, we're going to have, we're going to help them to identify some sort of community issue, uh, again, using the GIS software. Uh, they're going to be able to collect their own data to report on the impacts of their school uh, and as well as on the global community. And then most importantly, we're also going to get them to take action. It's not just going to be a, a hypothetical, what could you or would you do, but it's going to be, what are we going to do and let's do it. Next slide. So uh, the first group that we're going to be working with is a group called Roots and Shoots. And we're basically going to use their platform as a way to broadcast and showcase the students' work uh, that we are doing in all of our different schools. And this is a really powerful tool, uh, one, because the kids can see that they're a part of something and they're a part of something big that, that has this incredible and lasting change. So I think that's going to be neat for them to be able to see that. Uh, and to showcase it. So it's going to be easy for you also if, you, if you're looking to, to just kind of show your admin uh, what is it that you're doing or what is it that your kids are doing, this is an easy place to kind of guide them to. Uh, next. So Enviro Atlas is, uh, in many ways, I would say this is like the backbone of uh, um, the project piece by youth because this is, again, the platform that is free. Um, as long as you have internet connection, you can use it. There's no software that you need uh, to, to use it. It's just all right there. And so it's really cool, very valuable, very easy to use uh, sort of system that everyone has access to, again, so long as they've got internet. And what is really fascinating about this is that it, uh, so this is the GIS mapping, and this is going to allow students the opportunity to place different layers of things that they might be interested in learning about to see what impacts their community or what are some different uh, components that might have some sort of influence on their community. And when I say there's some different layers, I mean there's like over 480 different layers that they could put on to see is there a connection that we can say is like, hey, maybe as a result of seeing um, so much obesity, and seeing uh, poor water quality, maybe there's a connection there. Is that so? Is there something that we can learn about that? Or you know, could we also apply something like socioeconomic status um, you know, onto this? Or maybe density of trees or bird fauna or something along those, uh, those lines. You know, what, is, what does the data show us and what can we then derive from this? So I think it's a very valuable tool, and we'll show you how over the course of a year, um, you'll be able to integrate this into your own curriculum, and we'll help to give some like suggestions. Um, hold on one second. Pamela needs to come in. Um, and then with those, uh, all right. Um, with with those suggestions, then you can uh, incorporate that into your own curriculum and we'll, we'll help you to scaffold that. All right, so the next one is Enviro Atlas. This is a, this is a really neat uh, website that they have that ultimately provides students with the ability to look at and learn different information, but it's all been vetted by scientific data within their uh, local region. 
And so um, this is a really powerful tool. Basically, any one of those little links is something that they could click on to to learn more. I know it's super small right now, um, but you know, here we're looking at air quality and different things that connect to influence air quality. So if you're an uh, environmental science teacher, for instance, you could you know, have the kids look at some of these different components and figure out what connections can they make. But if you're a, a citizens, a global citizen science, uh, you know, a global citizenship teacher, for instance, you know, there's a bunch of different things that the kids can look at to say, oh, wow, I remember we talked about this in class. Look how this also in, uh, can be incorporated into something like air quality. And at the elementary school level too, there's also concepts that, you know, the kids can see. And even if they don't get everything that's being stated, they'll get an overall big picture sense of what impacts these. And again, it's all vetted by science, uh, by scientists um, uh, within the area. All right, next slide. Okay, so Earth Echo. Um, the Earth Echo Water Challenge. Uh, Paul, can you talk a bit about this one? Sure, not a problem. So uh, for, for those of you like myself, when we were kids or when I was a kid, Jacques Cousteau was my hero. That's why I became a scuba diver. Uh, his son, Philippe, who has taken over the reins uh, in the Cousteau, developed Earth Echo International. And basically what they are is a international organization that allow, that helps or aids students in monitoring uh, parameters of data within their communities uh, on, on different things such as water quality. Um, their, their water challenge is huge. I know a number of people that I've spoken with on, on this, this call are, are currently doing the, the water challenge with them. But what it is, is is a program to allow you to collect the data within your, in your classroom and then it keeps track of it and then you can look at all of the data across the globe and compare data back and forth. And so, uh, very cool opportunity uh, to that. Go ahead and hit next slide. All right, so I'll, t I'll do this one, Paul. So this is um, our timeline, and this is a big general picture of what we would be asking your or you to uh, do for your own curriculum design. So as you're thinking of over the summer, how are we gonna you know, incorporate project piece by youth into your curriculum? Here's what we're gonna suggest. So starting in the fall, um, the kids are gonna work on learning about their community and they're gonna learn about roots and shoots and just in general what it is and the, and the basic overview of kids can make a difference within their community, that's it. Um, then the second part is going to be to explore your community and to explore your community, we're gonna use um, both roots and shoots as well as Enviro Atlas. Um, and uh, I believe that is OES maybe. Uh, or Earth Echo, yeah, Earth Echo. Um, what's going to happen here is is we're going to teach, and you're going to you know have some time within your class to teach about Earth Atlas, and uh, I'm sorry, in um, Enviro Atlas, and this is the GIS system that I was talking about earlier. The kids are going to start to incorporate some of the concepts and creating their maps and understanding what those mean, and then you'll have a um, a little project that you'll ask them to do that would incorporate utilizing a map um, and they'll just that would just help to reinforce that they know how to use the technology in the winter you know think about like again november december january that's where the kids are going to start to choose their own issue that as a team as a group as a class you can decide how you want to do it uh, they'll choose the issue and it's really important that the students choose. Let them lead the way on this one. Let them be the thought. And there's no idea that isn't okay. Like really let them go with it so long as it's supported by the data. And it might be a long shot, like, uh, you know, for them to end, um, end hunger within their community. That's okay if it's, if it's not something that they can feasibly get done within the class period or the, within the, the year, that's okay. But allow them that opportunity to, to try to make the difference based on the data they have. They're gonna choose their issue and then they'll ultimately present that issue to us as a huge body, uh, you know, collaborative body across the United States. We have teachers from all over. Once they, uh, once they talk with other students and teachers 
about what they want to do and they've spoken about it enough where they understand the process and maybe some of the challenges uh, that they've received feedback from others, they'll be able to then go ahead and now take action. And so in spring is when we're going to look for the kids to actually take action and do something about the issue that they identified because of the data that they found utilizing EnviroAtlas. Now, again, I cannot overemphasize how power empowering this is for kids. The fact that they'll realize that they're doing something that is really going to make a difference, that's huge. You know, when you think about, and then and, and huge in so many ways, allows them the opportunity to get grants, allows them the opportunity to get scholarships, allows them the opportunity to get internships, allows them the opportunity to be part of like student advisory panels uh, in different states or regions or locations. There's so much that can come out of this and it's really powerful. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a, a quick rundown of how you would incorporate this program, Project Peace by Youth, into your own curriculum. Uh, and then from a, what is it that we're, we're, we would look for from you and how do we support you? I'm going to turn it back over to Paul and he's going to run you through the timeline of webinars that we have. All right. So if you look at what we need, um, we, we need a commitment uh, of people who are wanting to jump on board. Uh, and that deadline is July 13th. Uh, we'll have a meeting on the 17th for the kickoff. As we go through this, note that in, all the way through this, we have hours to where people can reach out and talk about different things that they're they're working on or they're thinking of or, or questions that they have. And so we're trying to support all the way through July 27th, our Enviro Atlas presentation activities. We're, we're going to be doing that uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I want to point out uh, almost all, uh, all of our times will be on Central Standard uh, just so we keep and I know we have we have people from around the globe on this, which is super exciting, you know, but uh, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, Germany, uh, 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 Maldives, we've got people all over just know that that we we are on Central Standard Time, and we'll need to, to work with that. Um, then we'll go through uh, Earth Echo. Uh, and that's on July 29th. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll send out, and just remember, we'll send out information on all these via uh, the email that you provided. Uh, in in August, first week of August, uh, working on curriculum development, uh, and then we're we're going to uh, report out what's going on, right? So we want to share. Go ahead and hit next uh, next slide, please. And then uh, we get into our Enviro Atlas training, right? For the students. And so what we want to do is provide them a, a, an overview. Uh, and remember, all of these things are going to be recorded. And so let's say it doesn't meet at the time that's convenient for what you want to do. Uh, we can always go back. And then we have those student office hours in October where people can ask questions, kids can ask questions uh, and, and collaborate on that. Uh, and then the idea is that we want you to explore those local issues. And then from there, uh, we're starting to gather data and, and uh, roots and shoots uh, moreover, also Earth Echo, Earth Echo International, uh, we'll be putting data in. Uh, and as we go through that training, uh, and then the celebration. And, and the idea, folks, is is we we really want to have students teaching, students, students collaborating, students talking about what they do. We want to have a summit where we showcase what the kids are doing. And and we'd love to have that online and I, or uh, uh, in person. I don't know that that's going to happen. It might be online, but either way, the idea is whatever we do, we're going to be able to take those students and what they're doing and put them on a global platform to show the world what, what kids are doing locally. And, and uh, at the very end, we have a, a, we're gonna have a short uh, 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 assessment just to, to understand for our own, our own needs, what worked, what didn't work. And, and what we want you guys to understand is that we're teachers just like you. And, and we are working together to make this whatever it's going to be. And, and I, I know that a lot of times we get the situation, we go, well, I'm in kindergarten. I'm not sure. Yeah, everybody's got a role to play. It doesn't matter whether you're a kindergarten teacher or kindergarten student or, or, or you're in high school and beyond. Everybody's got this role to play in this. And, and we develop it to make it user friendly for whatever level that we're at. And, and what's exciting is, um, like when we're doing the, the, the community mapping, 
Um, it doesn't make a difference if, if you're community mapping with crayons or you're community mapping with a computer, right? So, uh, and I was saying crayons for my kids who are in high school, they love drawing with crayons. Anyhow, so next slide, please. So, um, right. so we're Let sending this out one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we're sending out we're sending out the link, uh, the registration that we want you to have signed up by July uh, 13th. Uh, we will have the kickoff webinar, which is July 27th. Again, uh, Central Standard Time. Um, at any point in time, you can find all the information that are at our website, OperationEndangeredSpecies.com. Um, if you have questions, uh, comments, anything you need, anything you just want to talk about, maybe just want to say hello, uh, projectpeacebyyouth at gmail.com. Uh, I put my phone number on there at any time if you need to call me. Hey, uh, my phone's in my hip pocket, which drives my family nuts, but I always answer. And uh, uh, and the same with the rest of the team. And I want to make this very clear. Uh, this is a huge team effort, and, and thankfully, we have some amazing people, which includes yourself, who are on this team, and we we hope that uh, we hope that you you guys sign up uh, to take this journey. You know, I, I'm tremendously humbled to 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 be able to know and work with everybody who's here today, and even more. Um, we think hey, about Paul. what it is that we're doing, right? Hey, hey, Paul. Before we end this call, um, yeah. you are tremendously humble, and and um, you are leading this effort. You and Todd are leading this effort because you've done this um, this work quite well. Could you very briefly, in 30 seconds or less before the call ends, um, I know we talked about the importance of teacher pairs and having non-science oh, yeah. teachers, non-science teachers joining. Um, and uh, the environment is linked to so much in our lives. For example, yeah. you know, green space can affect how a child performs academically at school. So um, could you just speak to a couple examples where you even work with your music teacher, where you right. work with a history teacher, just very briefly? Yeah, not a problem. So when you think about it, this is the environmental health of our communities, of our schools, uh, there, is, there is zero disciplines that it is not applicable to everybody has a role to play and if you think about I, I think about like like uh, Kara said um, music right so if you think about the the brain uh, it requires a brain six seven eight times uh, to make a permanent memory right and so if we're looking at it from different different avenues whether it be music and singing about it or, or whether it's art and drawing about it or, or painting about it uh, or, or it's English and writing poetry or or even yeah. writing in a scientific yeah. genre. I mean, everybody has a role to play. And so I, I agree, Kara, that was a very important point. Um, everybody's in this big thing together that we call life. And there isn't a single single bit of it that's not touching each other and, and the environmental health and, and the overall aspect of, of everything in this little blue marble that we call earth, right? And so, um, I, th did that answer the question? Did, did I answer that? I think it did. So, and there's examples on our website of music and different things and writing. Um, but um, I, 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 I would be remiss if I didn't say this. I, I, I am humbled to be able to say that I get to be a teacher, as all of you. And we think about what it is that we do every day. We do everything and anything that we can for the betterment of our children, our kids, our students. And so as we're taking this journey of exploration, it is, it is truly a privilege to be able to empower and watch kids grab the torch of change in their own community locally and march forward and say, here is what we have and this is what we believe in and take control of their education. And, and it's scary at times for an educator to let go of those reins. But the greatest education in life that you can receive is something where you can say, I did this. I did it. And I made it happen. And I made it happen with my friends and my peers and everybody who's in this team. I can't say it enough. It is a team effort. And we look forward to learning from all of you. 
all of you from kindergarten all the way beyond. We even have right now on the call, we have a, a student over in Germany who's doing it because she wants to learn. Hi, Emily. So as it's going down, when we think about what it is that we're doing, it's a journey to take our kids and give them the tools and the resources to get to the next level. I'm humbled. It's a privilege. And I, I just want to say thank you, everybody. Wow, well said. Um, let's turn it over some questions. Um, Megan, uh, Kara, are there questions that have kind of come through that we can start answering? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to one of them right now off the bat. Um, <laughs> uh, Rena, yes, everyone's going to get a bottle of Paul's Energy. Uh, we're going to be sending that out um, shortly. It, it, I've been working with Paul for 10 years now, and and it's why I continue to work with him because there's no question that every year, like every year, he comes up with another really cool idea. Like uh, a few years ago, it was let's uh, save the turtles. Um, and we started working on that for eight years. And then it was let's save the uh, crayfish and or because the crayfish are going to ultimately help the Heinz Emerald Dragonfly provide burrows. Cool. Those are in danger. Let's do that. Then it was uh, shorebirds. Um, and let's help uh, save the shorebirds because now we're just going from one species to like multiple species. Uh, then it was um, uh, after shorebirds, it, this past year was like 30 by 30. Let's, let's help preserve 30% of the land and water within the United States uh, by 2030. That's, uh, that's this shirt I've got on right now. Um, and now it's, it's how do we get more teachers doing this stuff? And so this is where we're reaching out to all of you to help to get you involved but as i was talking with jordan um a couple days ago the beauty behind all of this is that our synergy is what makes the biggest impact and the synergy is that you know we do feed off of each other we do come up with the great ideas we do learn and listen from others and and that motivates each of us you know when we were when we sent out these invites we were very specific to whom we were asking and the types of qual and quality of teachers that we were looking for. And you all, you know, answered the call, but also please keep in mind, like, it wasn't just happenstance. You know, we were very specific with what type of rock star teachers we were getting. And so you guys are already those teachers. You all are doing something like this already, or at least have this knowledge and this concept, this idea, this uh, goal to empower your students. Now you're just, well, you're with all your peers right now. You might have been the one of those weird ones at your school, you know, the ones doing these really crazy, crazy ideas. And you knew deep down that it was something that was awesome and the right thing to do for your students. And everyone else was like, man, that's way too much work. I don't want to do that. You're now with your peers. All right. We're all doing we all do the same sort of stuff. And so together we're going to change the world like it's really cool stuff. And, and I'm excited for it um, in regards to who is this for? It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. This data is something that anyone can use. And if you're you know, a kindergartner, your job as the teacher is going to say, okay, here's what I'd like to be able to see my students do. This, this is what I'm looking for. Great. As a college level teacher, you know, I want, I want the students to be doing, you can't see my screen well, you know, this much versus that much. When I spoke at the um, uh, National Science Teacher Association uh, a couple of years ago, one of the things that um, college student and college professors had struggled with was what is the community service that they could do to really make an impact? That's where Enviro Atlas is so useful because it shows students as well as professors what is available, what's around. Um, and what they can do. And then we let Jessica them has a hand up and can maybe speak to that Enviralis part. Yeah. Yeah, I am so appreciative of everyone being here too. And, and Paul and Todd, your enthusiasm is great. I just wanted to, I've seen a lot of questions and I just wanted to say something very clearly. So Enviralis is a tool that EPA developed, but we developed curriculum that, you know, spans all grades. So what we are wanting to do with you all is to work with you 
introduce you to the tools we have, all this great data and tools that Todd's been talking about, and then whatever grade level you're in, because we know this is going to span kindergarten through, you know, 12th grade, is to help you figure out what's going to work best for incorporating it into your classroom. So we're excited about doing that at all levels and helping you helping you do that. Um, and there's and there's something for everyone. So I just wanted to like reiterate that that it's that there's definitely something we can do on all levels. And Jenna and I are really excited about about taking that journey with you. And it looks like we have gone past our time. I know we have not been able to um, probably cover every single question. Jenna's done a fantastic job of answering those in the chat box. She's <laughs> she's the mad typer, but there. Um, but please don't think that we're you you don't have an opportunity to ask questions later. We're uh, uh, Megan is going to email you all um, the uh, the contact information to reach back out to us. The website. Um, the, you already have the slides, but again, reach back out to us. We are here to help you. We look forward to working with you. The most important thing that you need to remember before this call ends is if you are interested in joining us in this fantastic journey, Paul, you want to tell them what they need to do? Hey, if you're going to join us, we're excited to have you. Put us on, go to operationendangerspecies.com. It has a sign up there. We also sent out the sign up to, to everybody via email. Uh, here's our information. Hey, if you just want to chat about the weather, give me a call too. I'm there. And so uh, very exciting. And we can't say thank you enough. Also, our hashtags are at peace underscore by youth and hashtag project peace by youth. And just remember, uh, it's a team. We're excited. We're excited. Register by July 13th. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, everybody. See you. Bye bye. Todd, before you close it out, I'll just answer this one question because yeah. I can't type it fast enough. Jen, if you're still on, we are we are going to make a database that shows where all the teachers are located and connect them. Absolutely. Wow. That was exciting. All right. Time now I got to go through the rest of the day. Uh, yeah. so if you could just make sure you, uh, at the bottom, just hang up, and then that would be great. Thank you all for being a part of this, and we look forward to seeing you during our kickoff uh, in July. Have a great Thank trip, Todd. Thanks, Thank you. Mom. It was great. Bye. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, Paul, I'll be looking for that cup of coffee sometime soon. But Tony, <laughs> you got it, girl. I, hey, I, sugar and cream, I got you. I got you. Todd, a lot of people in the chat are telling you to have a great trip. So you got some good vibes following you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Make no sure holes in the canoe. Bad situated right yeah. for the portage. At the portage. That's right, Jordan. Yeah. All right. See you later, man. See ya. I, I, I felt bad because I was going to say I had a good, good burger in Portage, Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right well so this was fun. i'm leaving this just super excited to get on board with this cool um yeah just very cool i think that i've been trying to do something like this kind of you know by myself with tiny amounts of grant money from gbsu this local college and so uh this is just takes it to another level so good good very excited good. See you guys, thanks for putting this together. By the way, I'm sure it's a ton of work on everybody's end. So yeah, thank you. All right, see you guys. See you later. See ya. Do any of you have any questions at all? <laughs> we all just like looking at each other. I know, right? <laughs> all right, bye, Sol. Thanks, Kimberly. <laughs> and I think Kay. That's Kay. Kay, do you have a question? K is scarce global. Oh, you're on. Uh, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself below. There you go. I just want. I just want to say thanks, and I'm trying to figure out how to get really fast and get registered. So, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Awesome. For joining right. us. Take care. Thanks. I just don't know how to also get out of here. I okay. don't know how to. So hit the maybe. hang up button. It's a little um, red. Oh, the hang up button. Oh, that hang up. <laughs> Phones don't look like that anymore. Oh, good job, team. Good job, you guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Very excited. Stop recording. recording.
That was very exciting. Yes. Stop recording. All right. And then we can. Hello, everybody.